Photo editing isn't a one size fits all kind of situation. And with so many different softwares out there for you to choose from, how do you know which one is the right one for you? Well, in this video, I'm gonna be comparing two of the hottest platforms that you can use right now for AI editing, Luminar Neo and Photoshop, so you can pick which one is right for you, coming up. Hey, what's up guys? My name's David Johnson on the Landscape Photography University channel. We make videos that help you master your landscape photography. So if you're into that, please hit the subscribe button below. It really helps the channel out a lot. There are actually some really big differences in Luminar Neo and Photoshop when it comes to editing, especially when we're talking about AI uses. That's artificial intelligence edits. So let's jump right into Luminar to see some of these and how they work within that software. Any of these tools on the right hand side with the AI next to them are going to be the artificial intelligence edits. To show you the impact that those have, I'm only going to be using those edits and also Photoshop AI edits to edit this photo. This is an image I took a long time ago, but I've always wanted to re-edit it. So in Enhance NI, I can always increase the Accent AI filter, and it's going to adjust things like contrast, the separation between your lights and your shadows, and it's going to do a lot just within a little bit of an adjustment. The next AI tool I'm gonna to come down to is Structure. So Structure is basically like clarity, like you would find in Lightroom or Photoshop, and it just adds a little bit more clarity and contrast to your photos as well. But these sliders that we've been using are a way to add contrast and clarity and highlights and shadows. So these individual sliders are actually impacting much more than just one thing, which is a big difference in Luminar versus something like Lightroom or Photoshop. I'm gonna come down to relight next, and I'm going to relight this photo. The cool thing about this is how you can increase or decrease the brightness near or the brightness far. What I'm gonna do is actually decrease the brightness near because I want less attention there and slightly increase the brightness far, and I can change the depth of that. So if you see the line going up and down the bottom of the sand there, I'm gonna pull that pretty far up because my horizon line is near the top of this. This photo. So that's how we relight this photo with that. Now, atmosphere, there was a little bit of haziness. So I'm going to add haze to that. And amount is a pretty good amount. I'm going to increase that and increase the depth so that it's only showing up in the sky. And I can adjust the lightness of that as well. Now that you've seen all these edits, we can take a look at who Luminar Neo is actually for. Luminar Neo is really for the photographer who wants to do a lot of editing in a short amount of time. They're not necessarily the most precise edits, but they are the most impactful that I've seen in a single software that gets you immediate results with just a few different tools. Remember, with something like Luminar, you don't have to know and understand every single tool. You just have to know what they will do to your photo. So they do a lot within each individual tool. And I think it's great for beginner photographers just starting out who want professional style editing results in a very short amount of time. Now, in just a second, I'm gonna to get to the Photoshop AI part of this video to compare the two and how they work. But first, if you don't have Luminar Neo and that increase your curiosity, I have a link below that will tell you a little bit more about how to get it and how to download it to your own computer as well. As you can see in my Photoshop window, you may be noticing I'm using something called Photoshop Beta. Now, if you haven't heard of Photoshop Beta yet or the AI Generative Fill tool, I have a full tutorial on how to use those, how to find Photoshop Beta, and how to use them best for landscape photography with the card showing up on your screen right now. So just to look at this, the differences here are actually selections and regenerative tools, not necessarily lighting and relighting. So if I have these available options, I can find something like a dust spot here and look at my generative fill and just say sky. And that's going to replace that area of this photo with an actual sky photo instead. So that got rid of my dust spot. What else could I do here? Well, one of the things I could do is actually clean up this sand. So I could just select the sand over here in this part of the photo and try to clean that up a little bit. And instead of giving it a query, I'm just gonna hit generate to see what that actually does to clean up this part of the photo. So as you can see, these Photoshop AI tools are a lot more of 
replacing something that I don't want in the photo. So it did clean that up a pretty good amount, but there's still a little bit of divots here that look more natural than the footprints that were already there in the photo. So there are adjustments you can make with Photoshop, I think that are overall great ones. And these are some bonus tips for you here is doing something like brightness contrast, a curves adjustment is a great one to do because it allows you to lift up on the highlights, which are on the right side of the photo and pull down on the shadows, which is on the bottom part of this graph and the photo too. So we can impact those and then create something like a brightness contrast uh, filter for this to increase any brightness or contrast in the photo as well. Now you may be thinking, okay, you added some haziness to that photo. How do you do the same thing in Photoshop? It's not an AI tool, but one thing that you can do is come down here to create a new layer and actually select out the paintbrush make it a little bit bigger of a paintbrush, use your Alt or Option key to bring up a little color dropper and select out that color. And then what I'm gonna do is be sure that my brush is a pretty good size and has a hardness of zero because you want that to really blend into the entire photo. And then come down here and just start painting this in. Now, before you paint it in, you wanna be sure your opacity is very low, something like a 7%, and your flow is pretty low too, 15%, something like that. And you can just start clicking and painting that into the photo. It's a very subtle effect, so you can't necessarily see it while I'm painting it in. But in just a second, I'm going to show you this on and off layer, so off, back on, off, back on, and you can see a lot of that hazy glow coming up, especially in the sandy part of the photo. So that's how you use these two softwares and the AI tools side by side. I think Photoshop is reserved for those more advanced photographers, but if you want to use Photoshop and you wanna see some more tools with that, you can click this playlist that's gonna take you to a lot of videos showing exactly how to use that software to level up your photography. I hope you learned a lot in this video. Can't wait to see you till the next one.